Hi everybody, this is Lars Vemje and welcome to Love Effects. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to get started with V-Ray for Solaris. The reason why I'm recording the tutorial about this topic is because I couldn't find any tutorials about it online. And it's not as straightforward as you might think. Fortunately, my friends at Chaos gave me most of the information that I'm about to give you. A big thank you goes out to the team at Chaos for their help and support. Thank you guys, I really appreciate it. Okay, so here we are in Houdini on the Solaris stage. I've created this scene for a couple of reasons. From a 3D environment perspective, this scene will be the foundation for my next short film, which is still many months or possibly a few years away, but it's a passion project that I love to spend time with. I will continue to work on this particular shot in Houdini and Nuke and create a compositing tutorial about it in the upcoming months. Okay, so once you have created a scene and a camera in Solaris, you have to create and set up a few nodes to render out your shot with VUA for Solaris. Here are the nodes that you need to create. A V-Ray standard render vars node, a render product node, a render settings node, and a USD render op node. Apart from needing to create and connect these nodes in the order that you can see here, you also need to set them up in a way that they're not only connected in the node graph, but also connected within their settings. Let me show you what I mean. Once you have set up a V-Ray standard render vars node, which is a node that you can use to create the render passes that you want to use in compositing, you need to select the render product node, click on this drop-down menu where it says ordered render vars, select one of the render passes from this list, like the beauty pass for example, and once you have done that, you just need to replace the last section of this line of text with an asterisk. The asterisk is being used to include all of the render passes that are activated in the V-Ray standard render vars node. You can think of the render product node as a container for your render passes. Once that is taken care of, you need to have the render settings node selected and select the render product node from this drop-down menu where it says ordered products. Once you're done with modifying your render settings, you need to select the USD render op node Choose V-Ray as your render delegate. Paste this line into the field where it says render settings. Paste the file path of your image sequence into the field where it says override output image. And that's pretty much it to start rendering with V-Ray for Solaris. But before I would click on the render to disk button, I would want to adjust a few more settings. To make sure that everything is set up to render a sequence of images, instead of just one frame, you need to change these last three nodes to sample and render a frame range instead of just the current frame. I recommend you to delete the two expressions of the start and end frames of the USD render op node, because that way you can freely decide and adjust what specific frames or frame range you want to render. In this case, I have previously rendered frame 50 and 51. Another awesome feature of VUA for Solaris is the creation of light select render passes. These light select render passes will allow you to gain even more control over the look of your shot in compositing. And they are rendered with V-Ray's LPEs or light path expressions. But these light select LPEs will only be rendered if you assign LPE tags to the lights you want to render passes from. You can assign such a tag to your light by going to the V-Ray and LPE tab of your light. Once all of the lights in your scene have such a tag, you can select your V-Ray standard render vars node, go to the LPE tab, activate as many passes as you need, name them, and add this light path expression to your render passes. The text within the single quotes should be the exact LPE tag of the light you want to create a render pass for. Light selects are very powerful in compositing, and I'm going to talk about how you can use them in Nuke in the compositing tutorial that I will create for this shot, once the shot is finished. Now that I have set up everything I wanted to set up, I could select the USD render op node and click on the render to disk button, but I've already rendered these two frames. As you can see, the rendering worked fine. 
and there are plenty of render passes that you can work with in compositing. But more about that in another compositing tutorial. Before I go, I want to thank my Patreon supporters for their continued support. Thank you Pablo and Hugo. I really appreciate it. Alright, that was it for this Luffy Effects tutorial. I really hope you liked it. If you want to see more of these videos, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions about my work, feel free to post them in the comments. Again, this is Lars Venier. Thanks for watching and goodbye everybody.